You're watching Two Works For You at 10. The Medal of Honor, it's the nation's highest possible award that a U.S. service member can receive. Only a select few are chosen. And now a Green Country family is pushing for that honor for their late hero, a World War II veteran who lived his life and his service to the fullest. Two Works For You's Christy Maria shares how his family remembers him in a story you'll see only on two. He was a special guy. He loved his country. Charlotte Cowens remembers her father in several ways. Roy Burleson was a restaurant owner, a face in the Okmulgee community. He was a dad, hands-on dad. But what Charlotte only later came to learn was his story as a Buffalo soldier. They had to stay low in the dark of night, and he, he, he just said that they lost a lot of good men. Before he passed on November 30th, Roy would tell his daughter and anyone who would listen about his time in the Army. The man that had been loaded up, he had to stay there with him, no place else to go. He was real intense about uh, his service. Roy was an Army engineer who would talk about his duty in demolitions, clearing out paths for the men around him. His family says it's how he received his first of two Purple Hearts. He was going against enemy fire when he uh, actually had to do the crawling to set the charges off. Roy's heroism also earned him the Bronze Star. But now, his family's pushing for an even higher honor, his dream until the day he died, for the president to call his name as a recipient of the Medal of Honor. You know, I'm going to jump up and down, you know that. <laughs> jump up and down and recall me. I would never turn that down. That would be a dream come true. Uh, that would really be a great honor uh, for my dad. Roy's family picking up the paperwork they first filled out in 2014 and reaching out to U.S. representatives in the hopes for a posthumous honor for their family's hero. Chris DiMaria, Two Works For You. Thank you, Chris. Now, according to the Medal of Honor website, only 3,500 recipients in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard have been awarded this acknowledgement of their extraordinary achievement in military service. Of those, 624 were awarded after their death. A big name in Hollywood tweeting about an Oklahoma death row inmate case, R&B singer and voice coach John Legend tweeting about Julius Jones case and the online petition. He's hoping to shine a spotlight on the case and asking people to sign the petition to bring justice for Julius. We reported on his case back in October. Jones convicted of murder in 1999. Jones has always said he's innocent. Last October, we spoke with Jones sister and the victim's sister about the night of the murder. The petition was started by the Julius Jones Coalition. Members plan on delivering the petition to the Oklahoma Pardon and Parole Board and Governor Stitt. At last check, the online petition on change.org had more than 135,000 signatures. Their goal is 150,000. New developments in the ongoing investigation near Talala. Investigators working on a 2013 case want to search another spot. They're now working to get a second search warrant for the property. On Tuesday, several agencies, along with the FBI, searched a pond and found some evidence where cadaver dogs hit on something. Investigators believe there is more evidence to be found, so they're looking at a different location. We have an original search warrant that covers all the areas, but we wanted to make sure that that uh, a second and subsequent search warrant would absolutely cover a particular area that we have a vested interest in. Rogers County deputies are conducting interviews and have not yet made any arrests. Late this evening, water filled the streets at 41st and Mingo in Tulsa, forcing drivers to slow way down. We we're told there was an issue with the pressure in the fire hydrant and the top just blew off. City crews shut off the water there as they worked to repair the problem. If you always feel down or depressed as the winter season rolls on, you may be suffering from seasonal affective disorder or SAD. It's a type of depression that comes and goes with the seasons. Fatigue, sluggishness, as well as um, depressed mood, loss of interest in things you usually enjoy. The mood disorder is diagnosed four times more often in women than men. Light therapy, vitamin D medication and therapy can also help. If you start scheduling enjoyable activities so that you make sure that you're being active, you're getting outside, even though it's cold, that fresh air is good for you. Um, you're getting exercise. 
you maybe are doing some yoga, some other relaxation strategies. If you think you have SAD, contact your mental health professional or your family doctor for a checkup. Now, your two works for you first forecast, brought to you by Route 66 Chevrolet and Nissan of Tulsa. We saw sunshine and milder weather today, temperatures back in the 50s. Tomorrow morning at the bus stop, it's going to be cold with temperatures back in the 30s for morning lows. Jackets going to be needed as you look at your bus stop forecast, 7 a.m., 39 degrees. By 3 o'clock, temperatures will be mild, 54 degrees, with a little bit of a southerly breeze, about 10 to 20 miles per hour. What we're tracking for you right now, seriously, right now, I'm looking at new data coming in at this second. We're tracking the potential for wintry weather on Monday. I can't wait to share with you this new data. It could have a small impact on the forecast, which again, I'm going to share with you in about 10 minutes. Uh, the cold front does arrive this weekend, bringing colder weather. But the next couple days are going to be warm. We'll talk about that and the next 10, plus a sneak peek at Christmas, all coming your way in 10 minutes. We'll look forward to it. Thanks, Mike. Well, it's the holiday season, of course, and that comes with a lot of parties and celebrations. So law enforcement agencies want to make sure that everyone has a safe and happy holiday. Friday is the start of the holiday drive sober or get pulled over campaign. More than 60 law enforcement agencies across the state will be joining forces with the Oklahoma Highway Safety Office to keep the holidays merry. No one wants to get the news that a loved one has been killed in a crash, especially this time of year. According to the newly released data from the state, 331 people were killed in alcohol and or drug-related crashes last year. While Oklahoma has seen a decrease in the number of people killed in alcohol-related crashes, the number of fatalities reported in drug-related crashes continues to climb. Last year, the annual campaign resulted in more than 600 DUI arrests statewide and close to 30,000 hours worked by law enforcement. Officers remind people that with the growing popularity of rideshare apps like Uber and Lyft, there really is no excuse to drive under the influence. Again, the holiday drive sober or get pulled over campaign begins this coming Friday, December the 13th, and it runs through New Year's Day. You know, this holiday season, it can be hard for some families as they're missing a loved one killed in a violent crime. And today, many of the families came together in Tulsa County to decorate a tree in their loved one's honor at Tulsa's Trees of Remembrance Ceremony at Chandler Park Community Center. Family and friends of those killed are encouraged to bring an ornament to remember those lives taken too quickly. You come out here and you meet other families that have gone through similar um, scenarios or similar actions that was done to Dina. Uh, you get to talk to them, you get to help grieve with them. Um, and it, it just brings people together that has been through a tragedy of somebody, of their loved one being murdered. Diana's daughter, Dina, was murdered in June of 1998. She was only 16 years old. Her parents say she was on her way home and never made it. Her body was later found in southwest Tulsa. No one has ever been arrested in this 21-year-old case. Well, it was a big day for a green country woman celebrating all that life has to offer her. The birthday girl in the sash celebrating her 105th birthday today, surrounded in love with friends and family. Jessie was born on this day in 1914. She lived at home until she was 100 and then says she moved to the Brookfield Assisted Living Center into an assisted living apartment for her big day. She received a proclamation from State Representative Mark Leepak signed by himself and State Senator Marty Quinn. Next at 10, when will Boeing's 737 MAX fly again? The latest on the investigation into the jet and what led up to two crashes earlier this year. The president wanted to use Department of Defense to build the border wall, but now it looks like he won't be getting any of the money. We'll tell you why. I'm Karen Larson. Mike Brooks is off tonight. You're watching Two Works Free at 10. Tonight at 11, 12 exactly, you're going to want to look outside. It's the final full moon of 2019 and this decade. This moon is called the cold moon. According to the Farmer's Almanac, the Algonquin tribes of the northeastern area, northeastern United States, named the full moon in December, or the last full moon of the fall season, the cold moon, due to the long cold nights. 
having a hard time getting that out. Uh, yeah, Goodness. Hey, better you <laughs> read it than me because that could have been trouble. Did not read that well at all. Uh, but anyway, the full moon, it is beautiful, isn't it? It certainly is. Check mm -hmm. out this uh, viewer picture sent in by Dan Horowitz. Beautiful pick. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow, Karen? that is. Oh, how did he get so close? Of course, it's super uh, zoom lens, and he's able to send that in. This is from the Tulsa area, and you can see this is the last full moon of the decade. Enjoy it while it's here, because it'll soon be gone, and we will end, usher in a new decade, new year, in a couple of weeks. All right, so earlier, we were talking about two different models, and you get to hear this a lot in the winter about the GFS and the European model, and one is based in Europe and one is based here in America. And unfortunately, historically, the European model has been superior to the GFS. Um, and the GFS has made, made some uh, great strides and progress over the years, but it's still a little inferior. And as we look at the snowfall, it's showing no snow for the area for this upcoming event Sunday and Monday. Now the Euro, which is superior, does a better job with winter weather events, showing the potential for one to three inches of snow. So I'm going to go to the middle ground, see so dusting to an inch possible here in northeast Oklahoma. The GFS verifies it's not going to be anything at all. It's just going to be above freezing. We'll see a little rain, and that is it. So we'll have to wait as we get a little closer because our high-resolution model data uh, begins to pick it up starting tomorrow, and we'll have a better idea of what will occur Sunday night into Monday. But this is a general idea of we could see some light rain or we could see a light amount of snowfall. The good news is for the Christmas parade Saturday, no impacts expected whatsoever. A little chilly northeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Temperatures generally in mid-40s, again with mostly fair skies expected. So right now, the weekend I'm going mostly fair on our Saturday chilly conditions upper 40s. 38 degrees on our Sunday, keeping it cloudy right now. It could see maybe some sleep pellets early in the morning, uh, but the most of the wintry precip should hold off until Monday morning, the way it appears right now. 45 in Tulsa at this hour. We have a south wind at 17 miles per hour. That's going to help keep us in the upper 30s tonight. Uh, this morning's low 29 degrees. It's start of cold tomorrow morning, about 10 degrees warmer, but we're going to have south winds, a little breezy. So wind chills will make it feel like the upper 20s. So you see the, the just there that even though we're going to be warmer, the winds are going to make it feel colder. All right, so Tulsa 39 uh, air temperature prior 34 degrees. As we head towards the afternoon hours, warm day temperatures in the mid 50s above normal should be in the 40s. We're going to be in the mid 50s for high. So really not a bad day for our Thursday. Under mostly fair skies, south winds, a little breezy, 10, 15, maybe up to 20 miles per hour. The 10-day forecast, 50s for our Friday, chillier Saturday and colder Sunday, upper 30s. Might see some, again, a sprinkler too Sunday, but there will be a chance for snow on Monday. Temperatures in the mid-30s. I've kept the chances really low until we get a little closer and able to fine-tune that exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're still four days out uh, from the event, 40s, and then back in the 50s next week. So. Looking chilly. Looking chilly. Some that really, really want the snow might get it on Monday. All right. Um, they'll have their fingers crossed, no exactly. doubt. Well, money diverted from the Department of Defense cannot be used to build a U.S.-Mexico border wall. That's the ruling from a federal judge who blocked the spending measure. More than $3.5 billion of military money had been earmarked by President Trump's administration to be used for the border wall. The DOD money was originally for more than 100 military construction projects. The Justice Department now now planning to appeal the judge's ruling. The Federal Aviation Administration is looking into the production of the Boeing 737 MAX in an effort to see if conditions at a factory contributed to the safety risks. The planes were grounded earlier this year after the aircraft crashed twice in just a few months. Dan Gentleman reports concerns about the plant were raised by a former manager who described the facility's conditions as chaotic and alarming. Stunning revelations about Boeing's troubled 737 MAX, the airliner that crashed twice in less than five months. 346 lives were lost. I believe production problems at the Renton factory may have contributed to these two tragic crashes. Appearing before the House Aviation Committee, Ed Pearson, who retired from the company last year, he was a Boeing senior manager at the Renton, Washington facility. I formally warned Boeing leadership in writing on multiple occasions, specifically once before the Lion Air crash and again before the Ethiopian Airlines crash about potential airplane risk. Pearson believes scheduling and worker fatigue increased the project's safety risks and conveyed his concerns to the company's CEO. I stress that investigating the factory 
and talking with frontline employees was urgent. Also revealed a dire prediction made after the first fatal crash. The plane would be involved in more fatal incidents if changes were not made to flight control software. The planes were grounded in March. Today, the committee chairman said that was not soon enough. The FAA rolled the dice on the safety of the traveling public and let the MAX continue to fly until Boeing could overhaul its MCAS software. Boeing says it has been addressing the problem. The plane will not get off the ground before the end of the year. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. Goodbye 2019, hello 2020. The New Year's numbers have made their way to Times Square. As the New Year approaches, organizers of the ball drop decided to do a little test run, counting down the lighting of the 2020 numbers. During the special unveiling, onlookers got a chance to take a few snapshots with the new decade. We've been working all year preparing for New Year's Eve, but the countdown really starts today. With 20 days to go, the seven-foot numerals arrived here in Times Square, and we are counting down to the big day on December 31st. And when the time comes, more than one million people will jam into New York City's Times Square for the iconic ball drop. Many more will watch it live on TV. We'll be doing that. 20 20. <laughs> feel old, Miss Karen. We I'll tell you what else made me feel that. old. I was shooting mm -hmm. TU hoops tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, got the camera. Their best player, Brandon Rochelle, just wiped me out. What? So if you were at the game, I'm okay. I'm here. I'm doing highlights. I don't have video of that, unfortunately. Click it off. But we're good to go. Uh, funny conversation on my Twitter page about that right now. Uh, we'll have those highlights. Sands me getting wiped out. Sports is next. Sports sponsored by your Oklahoma Ford. The dealers. Oklahoma City Thunder out west looking to make it four wins in a row tonight, visiting Buddy Heald and the Sacramento Kings. Once again, Dennis Schroeder has the hot hand for OKC. 15 points in 15 minutes so far. It's gone to the half, and the Thunder's leading 47 38. And welcome into sports, everybody. A good team in a bad mood. TU Hoops knocked off by Arkansas State over the weekend. First home loss of the year for Frank Haith's team. Golden Hurricane was in no mood to play around tonight against Boise State. Broncos a solid team, but TU outscores them 43-22 in the first half. Second half action here, Darian Jackson, nifty maneuver through traffic. Nice finish, 12.7 rebounds on the night for Jackson. Moments later, play of the night, Brandon Rochelle. Guy wiped me out. Look at that scoop finish high off the glass. Pretty. Rochelle scores 10, 14 for freshman guard Isaiah Hill. Tulsa beats Boise 69-56. Golden Hurricane is 8-2 with a big opportunity this weekend as they visit Arkansas on Saturday. While well, the Heisman ceremony now three days away for OU quarterback Jalen Hurts, LSU head coach Ed Ogeron very familiar with OU's QB. He was the starting quarterback in Alabama wins over the Tigers in 2016 and 17. You know, obviously we played against him before. He's an outstanding player and he actually beat us with, with his feet. He made some big plays with his feet and, and he threw the ball very well. I haven't watched him at all this year, but I have watched Coach uh, Rowley's offense, especially that Connor Reed. I've asked him about it, and uh, I think they're one of the best in the country of running what they do uh, on offense. They're very difficult to stop. Listen to that guy talk all day. The day before OULSU, it's OSU and Texas A&M in the Texas Bowl. Aggies head coach Jimbo Fisher has squared off with Mike Gundy one time before back in 2014. Jimbo's defending national champion Florida State Seminoles barely survived a season opener against the Pokes 37-31. Oh, it was a shootout. I mean, it was crazy. We had a really good team. We were coming off a national championship and we ended up going undefeated that year, but it was a shootout. We made plays. They made plays. Tyreek Hill was running kicks back, and but they were throwing the football, moving the football, and it came down to the last possession game. They were preseason, maybe 18th, 20th, somewhere in that range, you know what I'm saying, and had a great team, and uh, they won field position, but played. It was, it was a shootout. It was a heck of a game. We have it. Back with that video of me getting wiped out at TU tonight after this. For the first time in nearly three decades, the Bedlam Baseball Series will not be played here in Tulsa next year with OSU building its new ballpark and OU renovating theirs. Sooners and Cowboys are going to keep the games on campus in 2020. Bedlam game always well attended in Tulsa. Over 8,300 average over the last decade. Finally, back to the NBA, Kawhi Leonard receiving his championship ring. Clippers visiting Toronto. Leonard showing his old team no mercy. 23 points on 8 of 14 shooting, and the Clips blow out the Raptors by 20. James Harden, meanwhile, continues to put up mind-boggling numbers. 55 points tonight in Cleveland, hits 10 three-pointers. Harden, Westbrook, and the Rockets beat the Cavs 116-110.
This is the reason I'm doing this sports cast with a headache. Here's the video of Brandon Rochelle diving into me. and I, I did sort of save the camera. We'll see it in slow motion. I am so much older and slower than I thought in my head. It felt like I handled that. It just looked like he killed me right there. I, I'm not even moving. Aiden getting wiped out. Girl, come up for sports report. We'll be right back. Door. As we come to the end of the year, Google's releasing its list of the top search trends of 2019. Topping the list, Baby Yoda, of okay. course, one of the most searched for items. Overall, Disney Plus, the top trend in searches. Shepherd's Pie, the most searched for recipe. And Old Town Road was the number one song that people looked for. Interesting. Yeah. Trends of the year. Trending for the Shepherd's weather. Pie. Storm system there is. As we take a look <laughs> at the uh, yes, storm. Yeah. yeah, here comes our next storm system in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> That's going to be traveling all way by late Sunday night. Looks like a Monday event here in East Oklahoma. All right. Well, that is our time for tonight. We thank you so much for joining us and watching Two Works for You at 10. Wake up with the morning crew. They'll be here first thing in the morning at 430 until 7 weekday mornings. You have a good night.